Hey everybody, it's Bob Murphy here again. Today I want to talk to you again about QE3. Today I want to focus on the fact that the plan is for prices to rise. Right? So it's not an unintended consequence, it's not a regrettable side effect of the policy, but in fact the point, the way this thing is supposed to work, is to make prices rise more quickly. Let me read to you from two blog posts that make this point. The first is from Scott Sumner, who would describe himself as a right-winger, politically conservative compared to most. And the date of this post is September 15th, 2012. Now Sumner's talking about the fact that in the QE3 announcement, the Fed said that it would keep the policy accommodation in place well into the economic recovery. Now what does that mean? So here's Sumner telling us what he thinks that means. I speculated that this policy is a sort of dog whistle to the markets, trying to convince them that the Fed would allow slightly above 2% inflation without formally stating that goal for fear of setting off the Tea Party. Right, so what Sumner's getting at here is that Bernanke has to be a bit coy. So the metaphor of a dog whistle meaning you blow into a dog whistle, dogs can hear it, but humans can't. And so Bernanke is speaking very subtly and using technical language to let the sophisticated people in the bond markets and other people on Wall Street know, wink, wink, we're going to not be so hawkish on the price inflation front. We're going to be fine down the road if inflation gets above where we normally say we want to cap it, just so you guys know. But don't tell the Tea Party folks because they're too unsophisticated. They don't understand that we need more inflation right now. That's the idea. Now, bless his heart, Paul Krugman is a lot more explicit about what's going on here. So this is from September 20th, 2012. The title of this blog post is The Trouble with Fed Speak. So here's Krugman talking. So Fed hawks are all upset that expected inflation has risen since Bernanke announced QE3, as indeed it has. He goes on to say, is this alarming? On the contrary, it's the main purpose of the exercise. In simple models of expectation-based efforts to get out of a liquidity trap, the only way the Fed can get leverage is by promising higher inflation once the liquidity trap is over. He, later he says, inflation expectations are the main target and a rise in those expectations is a feature, not a bug. Okay, so let me just make sure you understand what's going on here. Conventional mainstream economists, whether they're right-wingers or left-wingers like Krugman, most of them right now think that a major problem, if not the problem, with the world economy is that people just aren't spending enough. Households aren't spending enough and businesses aren't investing enough. So normally, what trick do they use? Well, the central bank would just lower interest rates. And at the lower interest rate, people want to save less and consume more, and businesses find it easier to borrow and invest more. But oh man, interest rates are already at zero, nominal interest rates. So we can't push any harder on that lever. So what do we do? Ah, we get people to be convinced that the currency is going to be worth less in the future. In other words, we get them to think that prices are going to rise more quickly down the road than they think right now is going to happen. All right, so if we get them to think that prices are going to go up more quickly, that means they want to get rid of their money now because it's going to be depreciating even faster. So they're trying to make people think that their money is going to be worth less, so now they go out and spend it or invest it today. That's the plan. So, as I say, I just wanted you all to realize that higher prices, and the markets responded very aggressively to the announcement of QE3, showing a sharp surge in what's considered to be the market's expectations of future, future price inflation, that is not some unintended consequence. That's not a regrettable byproduct. That is the plan. The mainstream economists who are applauding the Fed's efforts here are glad that people now think prices are going to rise more quickly in the future. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We'll see you again next time.